Hello, and thank you for joining us. We are in the Otaku Protection Program, and therefore our identities have been concealed. I am Otaku number one, and joining me is Otaku number two. Hello. Otaku number two. What is our subject for today? Today, we are talking about a very sensitive subject. It is about pornography. It is about drawn pornography. It is about drawn pornography involving girls who are, shall we say, quite young, shall we say, not even teenagers yet. Yes, we are talking about Lolicon. Oh my, Lolicon. Yes. That, that sounds very illegal. It is depending on what part of the world you live in, you see. Well, how about Canada? Canada and the U.S., it is illegal to produce or to own said things, but it is not in Japan. Oh, my. Yes. So, Tell me. So this is part of the standard Japanese acceptance of, of artistic license of the ability of anyone to draw or make whatever they want as long as there's not a real person involved. And in these cases, it is simply an artist drawing characters who mm, simply may just look like they are quite young, shall we say. Well, now, for centuries, people have drawn naked figures in art, in the history of art. Mm -hmm. Why is this any different than drawing the naked boy peeing into a fountain or some similar artistic endeavor? Because they weren't having sex. Oh, so this is strictly for pornographic purposes. Correct, yes. So how did this get the name Lolicon? Have you heard of the book Lolita? Lolita? By Vladimir, Vladimir Nabokov? Yes. Have you heard of this book? Lolita, Light of My Life, Fire of My Loins. That's the one. The famous book by Nabokov. Yes, that's the one. That is where it comes from, because as you remember the plot, it is about a man and his attraction to a very young girl. And he developed what one might call a complex. Oh, a complex on Miss Lolita. Yes, a Lolita complex, thus. Lolita, Lolita Khan. Khan. Yes. Ah, I see where this has come from. Indeed, yes. So the young girl, older man relationship mm -hmm. has developed a following and a genre. It has. It, within pornography. Yes, it has, in Japan. For quite some time, indeed, uh, there has been animated versions of this starting with Lolita Anime, that was what it was called, back in 1984. Wow. That was quite some time ago, wasn't it? What began that? Well, it began because that was released as an OVA, an original video animation released direct to fans. It wasn't going to get on television. It wasn't going to get in, uh, released as a movie, but they could release it direct to fans. And so as the OVA market became into existence, they were able to make this and release it directly. So this was a super subculture, sub-subculture. Only the folks who were in the know would get involved with this. Yes, although there was quite a lot of it. There were uh, quite a number of magazines that would produce and sell and have in its pages this material. So many such that there was something of a backlash within the community. Uh, indeed, the third Gundam series, Double Zeta Gundam, has something of a reference to this. There is a character named LP Peru, who is a young pilot, a young girl pilot, who really likes to take baths. Well, now, taking baths seems reasonable. Most people do it. They do indeed, and it allows her to be naked every so often. During the show. Within the show. And of course, there's nothing wrong with that. And they never sexualize the character at all within the show. But her name is something of an anagram reworking of a the name of a very popular hentai manga magazine of the time, a Lolicon hentai magazine. Oh. 
So they were referencing that as, I believe, a form of brinksmanship, of bringing this out a bit more into the open. Oh, my. And yes, and suggesting that, all right, what is going to happen as this continues to accelerate? How open do we want this to be? Wow, so in an open culture out on broadcast and public, they're saying this exists, we know it exists. If you know what we're talking about, you know it exists. Exactly, done in a coded way. So only those in the know know what's being referenced here. Oh my, what, what, what result did that have in well, society? Sure enough, there was a cooling down of the, this, this, uh, this momentum within there, and fewer of these were produced, and they weren't sold as broadly. Of course, who can say how much that had an effect and what directly the effect was? Uh, it could have been coincidence, but certainly we saw fewer and fewer after the 80s. It became much more on the down low, if you will. Wow. Well, now that the age of the internet has given the ability for people to communicate cross borders, has this expanded that sub subculture yet again? Arguably, yes. It is much easier to get. It is much easier to distribute and make available. And because for a long time it wasn't it wasn't known that whether it was legal or illegal in the United States. Many of these images were hosted on sites available internationally. And so much of it was available. Um, indeed, there are still hentai lolicon manga magazines being sold and produced in Japan today, such as Comic LO, if you've seen it. And here's a cover of it now. Now, the cover of this looks rather innocent. Yes, it does. However, the contents... Not so innocent. Not so innocent. No, yes. Now, it seems that this genre spans a gamut from very simple, innocent, almost art, all the way to the most deviant of the spectrum. Oh, yeah. This is, this is quite a range. It is indeed. And one should be cautious because of any given manga, uh, manga magazine might carry a whole range of stories in it. So you might pick up something that seems innocent or might seem more in your approach, but it might not be. You must be very careful. Besides the fact that just if you're in the U.S. or Canada, it's illegal. Now, this doesn't just day in the realm of printed material. This is also anime. Correct. And now, certainly in hentai, in anime pornography, you will see characters who at the very least appear to be quite young. Um, this, again, is perfectly legal in Japan. But you might want to think twice about owning a copy in America. Mm. Is this also seen in video games or... Uh, Japanese distributions of uh, uh, dating games or... Yes, especially in visual novels, visual gal novel. games, dating sims. Yes, you will certainly see this quite a bit. Um, it depends on the story. If it is localized into the U.S., often the characters are given an age that is 18 or 21 or older to comply with U.S. laws. Whether the character looks anything like they are that age is irrelevant as long as they are stated to be so in the game. Now, quite often age and physical attributes seem rather arbitrary in manga. Mm -hmm. And being able to tell a person's age from their physical characteristics is not always easy. Correct. So is there a gray area with this material? It hasn't been shown in courts, U.S. courts, along those ways. Um, consistently, U.S. courts have not found in favor of those who own uh, anything that is lolicon hentai. Um, it, it is treated as pornography, mostly because folks are rarely caught with just one. 
and I suppose the spillover genres and expansion <laughs> lead to the slippery slope that gets them ensnared. Correct. One or two might be seen as forgivable, if you will, um, but not the rest. Two terabytes of it probably would not slide. Exactly, no. Um, and two terabytes are not all going to be um, debatable. There's probably not that much vanilla flavored <laughs> stuff out there. Indeed, yes, yes. It, it comes in all flavors, yes. Um, so be very careful. And indeed, you will occasionally find these things floating around. Um, I was at an anime convention a few years ago and saw a copy of Comic LO for sale. Um, be diligent. You don't want to be caught with a copy of that in your possession. So this is a good guide to uh, anybody with younger, younger members of their family who might be interested in this to caution them. Exactly. 